right. We are recording. Well, welcome, Deanna. So today, everybody, we are going to do a different type of show. Um, I am interviewing Deanna. She is um, somebody that I've worked with for the past several months. Um, and I and I feel like she has a story that's really relatable to uh, listeners in terms of her health journey, how she approached, you know, finding answers to what she had going on through a traditional medicine route. And then when that didn't work for her, seeking alternative options. And I feel like that's the place that a lot of you listening are in right now, where <clears throat> you've been to countless doctors, you've tried different prescription medications, and the problem is still there. Um, so I thought it would be helpful to just share some client stories. So Deanna is my first client story. Um, I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> I really have loved getting to know you and support you through healing. So, um, yeah, I'll kind of, I'll kind of open the floor up to you to introduce yourself. And then I have some questions for you. That's good. Um, such a big difference from where we started. Um, you know, back, I guess I found you in what, September, um, <laughs> And I'll just kind of dive into kind of what led me to you, how I found you, um, and kind of what led me to that, and then kind of what our journey has looked like since then. Um, I think for me, really, I think with a lot of issues that people have, I think it starts long before the symptoms actually start showing up. Uh, my first biggest symptom when I kind of go back and look at things was in 2019. I had this horrible pain in my left side. It was right under my ribs. And that was kind of the first thing for me. Um, I always pay attention to things, you know, so when that came up, I'm like, hmm, that's weird. I wonder that's new. I wonder why that's here. And I just, you know, kind of always had it in the back of my head, but then I kind of just went on. And so that was the first thing um, that started in 2019. I didn't have anything else show up until June of 2020. I had gone on vacation and I came back and I had um, this horrible UTI. If you know, you know, it was awful. Uh, and so for me, that was, you know, the second thing still had the left side pain. It had been going on for about a year pretty consistently. Um, but then with, with the additional, you know, adding on the UTI at that point, so I was like, okay, something else. And so with UTI, that's something you can't just let, you know, play out. You have to address it immediately. So I went to my primary care doctor, got an antibiotic, um, you know, came back and, you know, went about my day. It kept lingering for weeks um, into a few months. And so then came like August um, of that same year. And so... I still had it. And so she's like, you know what? We can't clear it. I'm going to refer you out to a urologist. So now I'm seeing a urologist. Um, I've also at that point added in um, a gastro doctor because I'm at that point. It's like, okay, I've had this side pain lingering for a year. You know, I want to go ahead and address that too. Um, you know, and then we're in the middle of COVID as well. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and this is going to be my year. Where I'm going to focus on my health um, and address these things. So you know, that August, I'm seeing a urologist, um, and I'm seeing, um, she says I have overactive bladder and I had, you know, of course, still the UTI, um, see a gastro doctor. He wants to do a colonoscopy. Um, and then, um, he says I have IBS. And so, um, okay, you know, we've got some answers. Let's address that and move on. So, and I won't bore you with all of the details, um, that goes on specialist after specialist after specialist, but I think it's important because I think when you do start having symptoms, there's a bigger issue and it goes back to that root cause. And I think it just showed up and it was the perfect, I don't want to say the perfect storm, but it was, it was the perfect storm for me. It was kind of my map. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I had that. I've always struggled with anxiety. I had my first panic attack when I was in fifth grade. I'll never forget it. Um, you know, I've had good years, I've had bad, but in the middle of all this in 2020, it was different. So the anxiety was there. I started having heart palps. I don't really remember that, you know, maybe they I had that, um, you know, before the anxiety, but this was so different. And again, I think these things are very important because it's part mm -hmm. of the story. Um, you know, still fighting these UTIs months later, um, 
you know, I think to myself, maybe I need to do a detox, you know, maybe I just need to do a detox. Um, and so I end up doing this like 21 day fix, um, in the middle of it, I was day 16, had followed it to a T out of 21 days. And I end up vomiting everywhere. Cannot, I'm like, what is going on? Like, I just can't keep nothing down. You know, I'm eating healthy. I'm doing this. Like, I don't understand why, you know, I'm having this issue. And so then I think, well, maybe it's food poisoning. So it could have been, and that was October of that same year. Um, then I end up reaching out to my primary care doctor and I'm like, you know what, let's just do a full blood panel. I'm going through all the steps, right? You know, all the steps that I, I guess you would assume that you would need to do to figure out if there is something wrong. And I'm thinking, is it the pandemic? Is it, you know, is that why I'm having all of these issues? Am I just stressed? And so I keep going back to that. And so I go to my primary care doctor, we do a full blood panel. I'm anemic. Um, and then then she runs my ferritin level. And I remember I was really stuck on that because she was very concerned about it. My ferritin was 4.5. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember when I came to you and I was so stuck and I remember you kind of like asked me, why are you so stuck on ferritin? And I think, cause you had so much knowledge that I didn't have at that time. And so, you know, educating myself and kind of reaching out. But for me, it was an answer. I didn't care what it was at that point. I felt mm-hmm. so bad wanted an answer and so for me that was the only thing that I could cling to I clung to that and then she referred me out to a hematologist so now I'm seeing a hematologist um I add in a cardiologist because of the heart palps and that was December of 2020 um come January of 2021 I start my iron infusions he had scheduled me for three um back to my gynecologist you know following up with her finding out if it could be something there. I had even mentioned, you know, maybe running, checking my hormones. And it was kind of like, why would I do that? And then I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have asked. So I kind of, you know, don't bring it up again. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and and nothing negative, it's just different. And so I have always had this interest in functional medicine. And so I had some of these things in the back of my mind, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm like, all of these doctors, all of these specialists, all of these appointments, I wish somebody could just fix, you know, like from the ground up almost, if I could just see one person that could just be total body, the host system, wouldn't that be a dream? And I'm just like thinking all these things in my head. Um, you know, I end up finally getting up the nerve to do my colonoscopy. I did that. Um, he did find H pylori. And so again, I'm like, okay, maybe that's it. You know, maybe that's it. And so that's another answer I have. I can, you know, add that to the list. And so we start treating that. Um, I'm on tons of antibiotics back up to January of that same year. I tested for another UTI. Um, and got the UTI still an issue. You know, the heart palps are still an issue. I get to the point where I can't even go up and down a staircase. And that's kind of back to that December when I added in the cardiologist, my heart's just out of whack. I can just feel it outside my skin. Like I, it's almost like it just beats so fast and so hard. You can feel it on the outside. Mm. And that brings on the anxiety. I've added in a psychiatrist at this point. Cause I'm like, maybe my anxiety is so out of control that I need to talk to someone. I've put this off since, you know, I was in fifth grade and I've never really addressed it with a psychiatrist. Let me add that. So I'm seeing, you know, all of these at the same time, all of these different Mm -hmm. doctors. Um, March, I started having, um, of 2021, I started having uh, tinnitus or is it tinnitus? I know people say it, you know, both ways, the ringing in my ears. Yeah. Um, I got a cold, a head cold that I fought for 10 months consistently. Um, Then, you know, the, I I, back to the H. pylori, I treated that still on antibiotics for the UTIs. Um, I think throughout the whole year and a half of seeing all these specialists, I took 14 rounds of different things. Um, and I was getting sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. And every time I would finish something, everybody would tell me you're fine. Your blood work's normal. You're fine. It's just anxiety. Have you heard, you know, anxiety medication? And I don't know why I'd you know, it's great for some people, but for me, I just didn't want to add another medicine. I didn't want to mask another symptom. So I started digging in. I started doing research. Um, and it is, it's so much information out there. And I have learned my mind is in such a different place from where it was even when I first met you, because it's so overwhelming. Mm. Um, 
when you start researching and you start trying to figure things out, um, all I had were my symptoms. Everything I researched, I was the textbook for all of it. And I'm like, how can I be the textbook for everything? You know, how could I have all of these different things? Um, so anyway, I saw a post um, from a boss that I'd previously had. She had done some food sensitivity tests with you. And it was something about, you know, I love a good recommendation or some, you know, something that, you know, somebody's used that I'm familiar with. And I loved and respected her still do to this day. And I said, you know what, I'm going to reach out to Stephanie and just see where it goes. It can't hurt, right? I'm not really getting anywhere. I'm getting, you know, worse. I felt by the day, um, could hardly function. I still worked full time. I've got three girls. Um, I needed, my, I just wanted my energy back. I wanted my life back. And I could not function. I couldn't, couldn't do in, even the basic things. Some days I didn't even want to get out of bed, but I had to because I didn't have a choice. Um, so I reached out to you and you were the sweetest thing in the world. And I just felt I, I could relate to you. I just felt a connection for some reason, whatever it is. And I don't know if it was just because somebody was actually listening to me. When I told you my story, you know, there was a point of me that was like, what if she can't help me? What if I'm just too big of an issue and she can't? And you were like, no, I think you'd be a good candidate. And we jumped in almost immediately um, and, you know, started testing. And I think it was October we did, first we did the GI map and then mm -hmm. dove into that and whenever we got the test results back, I was so relieved mm -hmm. because we answer. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like any, any answer I got at that point, you know, you just think, oh my gosh, it's going to be the worst thing in the world. If I find out I have this, or if I have that, but for me, it was a relief mm -hmm. um, in any of it. And any, even when I saw the specialist, it was little things along the way. I'm like, okay, this is it. That's my answer. You know, now let's start fixing it because you have to really know what you're doing before or what you're dealing with before you can fix it or come up with a solution. Um, you know, and I don't mind, I'm very open because I think it can help someone. I don't mind telling what my results were because they were pretty significant. Um, and I want you to keep in mind because I think it's important to everyone listening that, um, I had seen all these specialists for some a year and up to a year and a half. I had just been cleared in August um, from the gastro doctor. Um, I had done two rounds of antibiotics. I think my second one was like 260 pills that I took with the, the um, wow. what is it? A proton pump inhibitor. Am I saying that yes, right? Yes. Oh my so gosh. I it. it was brutal. It, you, it were really was. you were given like a, a really bad, um, <clears throat> for everything you had going on, the things that were, you were given, I feel like didn't help you. They weren't helpful things. And in fact, they could make some things worse. I think um, they did. My, I do for, for sure. But I, I want to ask you about, because you did see a lot of specialists and I just want to know your experience. Did those specialists communicate with one another to tell the story of what was happening in your body you know, did, did the gastroenterologist communicate with the psychiatrist? Did they, you know, did they all communicate with each other? None of them communicated with one another. Um, mm. My hematologist, I do know that my hematologist, when I went and saw him, mm -hmm. um, levels, he kept saying, you're bleeding from somewhere, you're bleeding from somewhere. And so I told him, you know, that I had seen um, a gastro doctor from, for the left side pain. That was the first thing that I had mm -hmm. that happen. And I told him, you know, I hadn't followed up and he recommended a colonoscopy. Well, it probably wasn't even a week later. My gastro doctor calls me and he's like, a little birdie called me. Come to find out it was my hematologist. Oh, that's and good. That was really cool you know, that he did that. Um, but you know, he reached out and he's like, I think you need to do this. And everything ended up coming back fine. The only thing they ever found mm -hmm. was glory, but yeah, I thought that was really cool that he did that. He reached out. Um, yeah, so. you don't see that too often. And, and that's one of my one of the unfortunate things about when you pursue the traditional medicine route is we have all these specialists, which on the one hand is fantastic because the human body is so complex. How great is it that we have someone that can specialize in this tiny part at the same time? Um, nothing happens in your body in isolation. It's not like right. you can separate your kidney from the rest of your body and what's happening in your kidney isn't affecting everything else. And I think we lose sight of that. Uh, in the traditional medicine field. And you were also given 
some pretty intense uh, treatments. You, you had um, multiple rounds of antibiotics, proton pump inhibitors. I think we've talked about them and how, you know, those were introduced. I, I, I don't quote me on this. I think 1989 is when they were introduced and they were only supposed to be used for about two weeks because they can hurt you if you use them long-term. And now I feel like we're just handing them out like M&Ms and people don't realize um, that it's not that old. I don't think 1989 is that old of a drug. Um, at least I, I'm, I was born around that time. So I don't feel like it's that old, maybe it is. Um, and also, you know, if, that, if those were the guidelines originally, why have we wandered away from those guidelines and how is that affecting the population? You had H. pylori, right? And so um, there's a story to be told there between those two products, or excuse me, between PPIs and H. pylori. And I think that um, if you are using them longer than they're intended to, it can exacerbate some problems. So I, I think that that's a really good distinction. And the fact that you spent a couple of years on this merry-go-round, right? Without feeling, and, and I, I wanted to ask you too, when you spoke with all of these doctors, did you feel listened to? Did you feel validated in your concerns? Or did you feel like you were told, I mean, you were given a diagnosis that I feel like is not, like IBS is not a real diagnosis. That's a code for, I don't know what to tell you you have, and I got to call it something. <laughs> so I'm just kind of wondering what, yeah, how you felt about, you know, your, your, um, was your voice heard? You know, I almost felt crazy. I did. I almost mm -hmm. felt like I did. I can't tell you along the way how many specialists recommended that I get on some antidepressants or, you know, what. Yeah. And, and that's fine. Like I said, you know, I've taken them in the past. It didn't work for me. And it's not something I didn't want to add that to the pound of medicines. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I should say that being added with every additional specialist that I added to the list and I wasn't getting any better. I was only getting worse. So no. And when I had recommendations, if I would read something and I would say, Hey, let's check this, you know, why would we do that? Why would we run that? Why run that? And I'm like, Oh, maybe I don't. You're right. Maybe I don't. Um, because I didn't have, you know, the education to back it up. I didn't know, you know, I was just like throwing out a recommendation and I was trusting them because they were the specialist. Um, and they give a lot of great, you know, feedback and a lot of great information for certain things. In my situation, it just didn't work. And I don't know if it is the lack of communication because, you know, I, you know, this person's doing this and that person's doing this, or I don't know that they connect all the dots. Um, and I was very informative with every visit on, you know, this is where I'm at. This is what's happened yeah. prior. Um, this is what's worked and this is what hasn't. So, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I, I think that's something I can relate to. I mean, when I was going through my mold issue, <clears throat> my, my biggest symptoms were GI and I went to multiple GI specialists, um, just to be told, like, they'd look me up and down. I'm like five, three, not even 110 pounds. And I, they look at me and say, Oh, you like, you're healthy. What are you doing here? Like your stomach isn't that bloated. Like maybe you just look like that. Um, and I just kind of wanted to scream a little bit, like, you're not listening to me <laughs> when I tell you there's a problem. Like I didn't take half a day off work to come here to exactly. pretend like there's a problem. Um, and, and colonoscopies are great for some things. Um, I feel like they are overused. I don't feel like, you know, the main problems that we found, and we'll talk about your, your GI map here in a minute. Um, those aren't things you can detect on a colon scope because that's really just a camera. They're just looking for physical things. Um, and usually when you have stuff going on in the gut, it's microscopic, it's bacteria. Um, and you're not gonna see that with the type of equipment that they use. Plus they're just looking at the colon. Um, they're right. not looking at the small intestine. And I think a lot of people's problems are actually in the small intestine. And that's a little harder to treat. And it's also more common in, in my experience with people that have chronic issues. So, um, yeah, I wanted to make that distinction too. So what made you ultimately decide, okay, I'm ready for a new approach. I'm, I'm over this. Like what was your tipping point? I think for me, it was, I felt horrible and I had made mm -hmm. this commitment 
myself where, you know, this is the year I'm going to focus on my health. I'm not going to keep letting things linger. It's obviously getting worse. Whatever it takes, whatever I have to do, I'm going to figure it out. I would spend hours and hours and hours a day researching. My husband would research, you know, trying to figure something out. There's, there's got to be an answer. Somebody else, you know, there's not a whole lot. I mean, there are, but it's so cumbersome out there. There's not, you know, that one story that may just exactly mirror you. And I think, you know, maybe they have other issues going on. I think with me, and I am very in tune to my body as well. I, you know, I notice yeah. things, something's off. I'm like, something's off. This isn't, supposed. and then I'll go back and I'll question it. You know, is it just me, you know, stressing about this situation? And now that I have gone through this process with you, I will never question anything again when it comes to my health, because there was a reason why I felt and experienced every single thing I did. Um, and I knew that in my gut, it just, it told me, keep going, keep going, keep researching, do not accept this answer. And so we really have to be advocates for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and thank goodness for me that I do have, that is one of the greatest things. I have that intuition. I'm not going to stop. I've got that drive. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find the answer. Um, and that's, that's what it was like with me in this situation. Yeah. I, I will say like, you do have really good intuition, really good. Like you are gifted at listening to your body. And I love that about you because I feel like so many people lose that. In I feel like we all sort of, I think we all have it. We're all born with it, but then we become so used to feeling like crap for so long that we lose sight of ourselves. And then we don't, we don't know, like when you don't feel good at baseline, it's hard to know what feels off. But I want to say something, cause you mentioned that you, you had anxiety as a child, but this was different. So different. I knew it was different. Yeah. So you were able to recognize that, that this, uh, -uh this isn't the same type of anxiety. This is, and I think, so a lot of people that I work with, um, have this anxiety. And I even experienced this myself with mold waking up at 3 AM feeling yes. super anxious, like a, almost like a panic attack. I don't even know if that's what it was, but that's what it felt like to me in the moment. And it's like, I think that anxiety, a lot of times is your body saying something's wrong. Pay attention to me, which is very different from, from the fifth grade anxiety that I think that's a different sort of thing. And I like that you say, you know, there's a time and a place there's totally a time and a place and an appropriate usage for anxiety medication. Nobody's doubting that here. Um, but to say you have this new onset, it's a different kind of anxiety. It's a different anxiousness, a different feeling. And just to be told we'll take anxiety meds. It's like, well, no, that's not going to fix my problem because my anxiety is here to tell me something's wrong. And if I don't listen to that, if I just ignore it, I'm just going to further myself away from that intuition. Yep. I was so proud of my body. And I know that sounds crazy, but I'm like, wow, our bodies are amazing. And they tell a story. You just have to listen. And I think sometimes with society, it is separate. You know, it's like, you're supposed to feel this way. You're supposed to be tired, you mm -hmm. know, or maybe, you know, you've got a lot going on, you know, it's stress, but it was different. And yeah. I don't know that I can explain it. Maybe, you know, as time goes on, I'll be able to explain it better. Um, but it was just different. And I just knew that there was something going on. There was something. Yeah. And I, not make sense of why no one could find it um until I met you so <laughs> so we so we met um we did an initial intake where I like to know everything about you from like were you a c-section baby or vaginal birth because that tells me about your gut flora um to like what'd you do yesterday I like to know all of those things because they tell the story of you know, people, people generally can tell you what's wrong with them. If you just listen, if you just take the time to listen and you, and, and I think, you know, another limitation of traditional medicine is you don't have that. Um, you don't have time. You That's have it. six to 15 minutes with a doctor, maybe. Um, and usually if you're anything like me, you're nervous and you're forgetting what you're going to say. And as soon as you leave, you're like, Oh, I should have mentioned these five things, you know? Um, and you're trying to, like beat the clock, essentially getting these things out. And I think, um, I think that's unfortunate because I feel like having those pauses, having those breaks, having just a, like a, a long conversation, you'll tweeze things out that you didn't, you didn't know, you wouldn't have known otherwise. And so 
I think having the ability to just sit with you for a couple hours and get to know you, um, get to look at some of your, you've had, and like a lot of people I see, you had a ton of labs done. Like you, you brought with uh-huh. you tons. Um, and that's pretty normal for the people I work with. They, they have searched high and low. I'm not the first person that they've gone to for help. Um, and they've searched high and low. So we already have a partial story. Um, but what's unfortunate about a lot of these labs, like the colonoscopy, mm-hmm. um, they're kind of like CYA labs, right? Like co- cover your butt labs. They're not labs that give us really meaningful information. They're labs that are going to tell us if you're dying, right? They're labs that are going to, um, so a doctor can't get in trouble for saying, well, I didn't look for this. I didn't look for cancer. That's what the colonoscopy is for. We, we looked for cancer. You don't have it. So you're fine. Um, exactly. well, well, no, actually you had H. pylori, which is something that's associated with the developmental of cancer, if not treated down the road. Um, but they don't, they don't, and I'm so grateful you actually got tested for that because they don't typically do that. Um, but what's interesting about that is you still had H. pylori when we tested. So that, it, that's, it wasn't gone. Wasn't yeah. It? Twice. I did not treat it just once. We treated it twice. And I did a breath test six weeks before you and I tested it and I got cleared. Hmm. Yes. Six weeks before you and I tested it. Yeah. So that's, um, so that's just really interesting. So I, I like the way that we get to start the things that you had going on led us down to the, the path of doing this test called the GI map. It's a gut stool pathogen test. And it tells us a lot of information about what's living in your gut, both good and opportunistic bacteria. If you have any virulent pathogens, worms, parasites, um, it can detect even things like Epstein-Barr virus. Um, my favorite piece of this test is it looks at your intestinal health overall. So it gives you kind of a score of your intestinal health. So it looks at um, pancreatic function, gallbladder function. Um, how are you metabolizing estrogen, which is a clue into hormones. Um, you were, you had in your mind, oh, I need to test my hormones. Oh no, you don't need to. Yeah. This gives us a clue on that. It tells us what your inflammation's like, what your immune response is like. Do you have leaky gut? It gives us some really helpful information. And for you, Deanna, it gave us a lot of answers as to why you were going through what you were going through. Yes, a ton. So I actually have that pulled up right now. Um, I also wanted to, you, so if you're comfortable talking about this, um, I'm an open book. So okay. what, if you call someone else. So another thing that you were working on when we met is you were on Accutane. Yes. For just like your face was breaking out. You didn't know, you didn't understand why it like, didn't matter what you did, what products you put on your face. Um, I want to talk about honor breakouts. It was awful. I mean, painful, cystic, could not cover it up. Mm. Oh, it was awful. Yeah. And the, and the route that you were given. So Accutane is, is a medication. Um, that's really hard on your liver and it kind of, in my mind, it's kind of kicking you while you're down. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just going to put a pin in that because we'll talk about that more. Okay. Um, but looking at your um, GI map, we discovered something. So you said you um, were on vacation and you got a UTI. What else mm-hmm. happened on that vacation? My niece got C. diff. Hmm. And here we are two years later. And what are you positive for? C. diff A and B. And what's really unfortunate is you probably had it for a long time. Yeah. And it went un- untested, unchecked. Um, you had the colonoscopy, but that's not going to tell you if you have C. diff. So I think, and you know, I, this is not to pick on traditional medicine. We all have our limitations. We all have, um, we're all human. Absolutely. But this is something that would have been really easy to test for had somebody listened to your story, right? If you, if somebody allowed you the opportunity to say, yeah, I got a UTI on that vacation. And also my niece who was with us had C. diff. Right. The Um, same, both came home and within days you know, she was positive for C. diff. Um, and I, I'm this, it was the worst. I've had a couple UTIs, not many. Mm-hmm. 
several since then, my body just would not heal it, um, which makes sense now, but it was awful. It was the worst, the worst things I've ever experienced. That I, yeah, like I said, if you know, you know, it was awful. So, yeah. So, and, and C. diff is treatable, um, without antibiotics. So what makes C. diff, if you're not familiar with C. diff, it's, um, considered like a super bug because it's really resistant to a lot of antibiotics. So a lot of folks in the hospital have to get like a really expensive type of antibiotic, um, to treat C. diff and C. diff, um, is very specific. Like I can usually, if I walk into a patient's room and it has a specific smell or their stool is a specific color, and I won't get too graphic here, you know, you know, it's a whiff of the diff, right? You, that's what we call it. It's so crazy because I was not, I didn't have that. You know, and I know you have like a lot of diarrhea, you know, I never had any of that. Mine was actually the opposite. I could not go to the bathroom for days, a week. Um, so mine was, you know, I didn't have textbook symptoms for that, which is crazy. Which is, I love, I love that point because I think it's important to not just go based on symptoms. And mm-hmm. that's the exact reason, because a lot of different things can cause a symptom. And so if you're chasing after a symptom, you can kind of miss the forest for the trees. Um, so I like to do tests that really look at the bigger picture and we do, you do have other things in this test that could, could propagate, you know, constipation. Um, but I thought like that and you, you were very high in both of those. It's not like you were just over the border. You were significantly high for both toxin A and B. Um, and then you were also positive for H pylori which I mean, those two things together are just awful, awful, <laughs> crazy. And, but it, I had that moment of relief. Like you did like, Oh, well, no wonder she feels awful. I was relieved, you know, it, thinking back, like I would have been like, Oh my gosh, this is horrible. No, I was like, yes, we have answers. I just wanted an answer at that point. Um, yeah. yeah. I'll never forget like us messaging back and forth. Like I've got some answers. Uh, <laughs> you know, in that first conversation, it was, it was a good one, even though we were getting not so great news. It was kind of good news. Well, I think it's great news because these <laughs> are things we can deal with. This is exactly. no doom and gloom diagnosis by any means. It's, um, and you know, I, I don't like to throw the kitchen sink at people. So we treated them one at a time. Um, did. I don't like to do a lot of supplements at once. So I wouldn't want somebody else to go through that either. I, and I, and you don't want to shock the body. So we kind of went through this order of operations with the gut, um, to clear both the H pylori and the C diff out so that you could get back to having just a regular, regular bathroom schedule instead of kind of what you were experiencing um, exactly. and to get you to be better, to be better able to absorb the nutrition you were eating. Um, and I think that both of those things can play a role in acne. I think both of them can. Um, you also had what we call dysbiosis, which is where you have an imbalance of good and opportunistic bacteria. You are really high in some good bacteria, really low in others. Um, you're really high in a lot of opportunistic gut bacteria. And that's kind of, again, going to play a role in like, you not feeling great. <clears throat> I'm looking through the rest of this. Oh, yes, yeah. that's right. Oh my gosh. I almost forgot. <laughs> What's that? So we can't forget the parasite. <laughs> you were positive for a parasite. Yes. Talker, I think thinking back now, I mean, I guess it's easy. You know, anybody can contract, but I was like, what? I think I was more shocked about that than any of it. Yeah. Parasites will eat your nutrition. Parasites will play a huge role in acne. Um, that cause a lot of gut disturbances and yeah, you, you had one. So you, I mean, this is a pretty, now, if you're listening, this is not your typical GI map test result. Typically this you've in- got, <laughs> <laughs> this was intense. <laughs> this was intense. Typically you have a one or two things going on, but not, I mean, you had one of the most virulent pathogens with C. diff a parasite and H pylori, those are both really, really um, tough things to deal with. So, I mean, like kudos to you for dealing with it for as long as you have, 
because um, I think those things combined would make anybody feel super anxious. Uh, something's wrong and it could be even um, definitely lots of discomfort, but maybe even some pain. Yeah. Yeah. So it then we looked, oh, go ahead. I said it wasn't fun for sure. No, but Hey, when you get an answer like that and you have a plan in place, like how much relief is, I mean, you got a plan to take care of those things and you know that they're not a part of your future. Exactly. And that's the good thing. You know, I think we addressed it and did it with ease. We did it without antibiotics and I don't know, it, it makes me really hopeful. So if it does happen again, I don't think it would, would be my reaction that it would have been, you know, before I've experienced it. So I wouldn't trade it for nothing, even though it wasn't fun. And, you know, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Yeah. Um, and looking at the intestinal health, your immune response was really low, which makes sense because you were probably, my guess is you were dealing with C. diff for probably about two years. Um, don't know how long you had the parasite. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how long you had H. pylori either, but when you have a chronic issue like that happening, your secretory IgA can get, can get kind of low because your system's exhausted. Right. <clears throat> The other thing that I think is worth noting, so I always add on a test to the GI map called Zonulin, is a test for leaky gut. Um, you were extremely high on leaky gut, extremely high. So um, like more than double what the normal range would be. And so that tells me again, a lot about your immune system and potentially, and you know, I can't prove this, this is my own opinion. So just take this with a grain of salt, and I think there's a connection between glyphosate exposure and leaky gut. And um, I think that um, I'm, I'm trying not to, so you're in this, you live in the Southeast region of the United States mm -hmm. where a lot of, so Midwest farming practices all drain South through, um, you know, the Mississippi river, different river systems. And it's just known that we have a more buildup of glyphosate in our water and air down here. So that I kind of, you know, lots of questions there that I don't have answered, but um, we definitely knew we had to address this leaky gut problem. Otherwise um, you were going to continue to go down this road and you actually, and I didn't mention this, but you had several uh, potential autoimmune triggers marked. You had several of them. And I think that those two things are, are connected. Mm. All right. So I'll close that out. So tell me more about this process. So we we've got your results. What was it like going through the process of healing? Cause it is a lot longer than, you know, a two week antibiotic bout. Um, so can, can you walk us through like what that experience was like? I think for me, I will say I was ready. I think that's so important. I think the person has to be like, Hey, this is going to take a little bit more time for me. I had done this already for a year and a half, two years. I'm like, what's a few more months. I can do it. Mm -hmm. I've tried other, you know, ways to do different things and it's not working. So I'm going to go this route. I just felt really good about it. Um, you know, I loved that you did not put me on a whole bunch of supplements. You know, I think maybe some people may think, you know, functional medicine is a whole lot of supplements. Mine was not overwhelming and it's stuff I will continue to do forever. The knowledge that I've gained, I think that's another big piece of it, just the education. Mm. You know, sometimes a blind eye is, you know, just clueless. Um, you know, sometimes I think you just need to educate yourself, be open-minded to try different things and really go all in and because you mentally, and you really have taught me that it plays a whole part of it as well. Um, you've got to be in a good mental place. You've got to be committed. Um, and so I was committed. I was all in, um, you know, within 30, 40 days, I would say I started feeling better and I didn't go into all of the symptoms. You know, there were so many other things that I was experiencing. Those were just some of the, the high things. Mm -hmm. Um, chronic fatigue. That was probably one of the scariest things that I felt. So when I started to be able to make it an entire day and not just completely crash at like 
two, three o'clock. And I wouldn't because of course I'm working. So I couldn't, but every day at like two o'clock, I would just want to crash. And so that first day I was like, oh, I've made it a whole day. Mm-hmm. And so I think when you start seeing those positive things and you start seeing the benefits, then you just keep going. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for me, mm-hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't hard. It wasn't a difficult thing to do. Um, I knew that I'd made the right decision and I knew that I had the right people in my corner and, mm-hmm. you know, and if we didn't know the answer, then we would figure it out. But I will say something that I loved every time I asked you a question, if I had a concern, like, you know, Hey Steph, I'm feeling like this today. Like, you know, is this not, you had an answer for everything. I don't know if you really realized that, but you did. Oh, no. There was never a question that I had through the entire process. You didn't answer or you didn't have an answer or you just weren't super confident and just really made the process for me really easy. Um, I had you so makes it makes it affecting that thank you well it's interesting you mentioned that um I didn't do do a lot of supplements with you so I'm I'm known for not being a big supplement person in fact I debunk a lot of supplements on this podcast (laughs) but I feel like you out of all of my clients got the most (laughs) because we had to address you know the way you address parasites and I actually have different protocols for different types of parasites right so the way we addressed um, the parasite was different from the way we addressed H. pylori, which was different from the way we, I couldn't do a one size fits all. So we did, I split it up doing one thing at a time, um, but you probably ended up doing more things <laughs> than a typical person. So it makes me really happy to hear you say that it wasn't Even overwhelming. That wasn't overwhelming. So yeah, it wasn't a ton of, so I've read some things and I'm like, Whew, you know, that's a lot. But um, yeah, no, it wasn't, it wasn't at all. Easy. And my hope for you is that, um, and so for all of these, these protocols we did, there was a start and an end date. I was like, you're going to start it on this day. You're going to do this for 60 days. You're going to do this for, yeah. you know, however many days and, and then you're done. Held. I mean, every little, you had it all mapped out for me. So I didn't have to question. And if I had a you know question, like, should I do this or should I do that? Um, you always answered it for me. So yeah. And, and I, and I think it's important, like for listener, for you to know that I don't want you to be on supplements for the rest of your, that is not my goal. Like you're going to do so, like, I hope you take magnesium for the rest of your life. Cause we're all deficient. Yes, I want to take forever, <laughs> but, but as, as far as like the, the treatment protocols that we do, um, those are not things that you should be doing long-term. I don't think they'd be good for you to be doing long-term. So Um, I just want to make that, that distinction that, um, there are very few things that I take and I'm constantly changing my mind about what I take because I'm learning and reading more things. Right. So, um, and I think that's okay. I think that, you know, before I did this whole process, I've gone through this journey with you. It was like all or none. Like I have to get it all perfect. You know, Mm -hmm. I'd line it out. I would so much pressure on myself. And then you have really taught me that just make subtle changes, you know, it's okay. And then just build up. And so I went to the grocery store yesterday and, and the lady was checking me out. And this is so random. She was like, wow, you eat so clean. She, I, this is what I want. And I'm like, look, and I went, you know, I kind of walked her through it. And I said, don't stress yourself out. I said, it's taken me years to get here. And I said, just make a few changes, yes. just add to it. And that goes back to kind of, you said you're changing things out that's okay. You're going to find something that may work better, you know, down the road because we have more information on it, um, or we've just, you know, been introduced to it and that's okay. Then switch it out, but at least we're making subtle changes along the way. Yeah. I I think that's a really great point. And, you know, along this healing journey, we didn't just talk about, you know, here's the findings and here's what we're going to do to treat it. We talked about other things like, what kind of self-care products are you using? What are you, what kind of oil are you cooking with? What kind of pots and pans are you using? What kind of air are you breathing? Are you drinking filtered water, right? Because if you're going to do this holistic approach, you're kind of doing a disservice if you're not addressing all of these other things that play a big role in your, in your health. And so you did those that you, you know, swapped things out over time. And um, my goal is never to be overwhelming because that's not, you're already stressed. Why would I want to make you more stressed? So just when you run out of something, when you're done with that glad container, recycle it and get a Pyrex, get a glass one. Um, 
just make it easy on yourself. And so having somebody to kind of guide you through those things too, I think is, is helpful. I had to read a lot of books to get there. Um, but I totally would have paid somebody <laughs> to be like, okay, here's, here's what you need. Here's the ingredients you need to steer clear from when you're looking at a foundation, or here's the ingredients you need to steer clear from when you're buying processed foods. Um, and so I think that, that makes a difference. Great for that as well. Cause it's like, I'll read something, you'll read something. I, you know, I can ask you questions or you'll put up a podcast and I'll listen to your podcast. And I'm like, wait a minute, this either, you know, doesn't make sense because of this I've read. And so we can collaborate mm -hmm. on that or I will completely change my mind because I'm like, wow. And that's okay. You know, yeah. I think it's a process. And so it's just educating yourself and making subtle changes and just doing the best you can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I've changed my mind. I've gone back and forth on cod liver oil. Is cod liver oil good for you or bad for you? And I've gone back and forth so many times. I was a huge fan of taking vitamin D for a long time. And it took me a year of reading to convince myself because I didn't want D to be bad. I didn't want it um, yeah. to finally come to terms with, no, I can't justify this anymore. It has to go. And now I need to talk about it because, whoa, what did, what did I learn along the way? You were really gonna... hung up on iron and ferritin yeah. for a while. And, um, yeah, I don't know if you want to talk about that or not. Yeah. Cause I was, that was the one thing, like, I was so excited. Like we have an answer. And then you're like, why are you so hung up on ferritin? And I'm like, <laughs> and I was like, it's the only answer I have, but maybe she's got a point. I'm always curious. I encourage everybody always mm. be curious. Don't be stuck in one way or, or the other. And so for you, it's like, I've completely changed my mind. I canceled three iron infusions. Yes. And amazing. You know, I didn't need those. So, um, and I, I think thought that those could make you sicker. Absolutely. You know, and, and I thought at one point they were my only chance of survival. I was so sick. I'm like, I'm not going to make it unless I get these iron infusions. What if I don't get them in time, you know, or just thinking, cause I felt so bad. I felt so bad. And, you know, I've been just fine and I haven't had one in a long time. So yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. So a lot of women are told they're anemic like you were, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you're told you have low iron, usually it's iron deficient anemia is what they, what they call it. Um, typically that means your iron is just stored in the wrong place because you have all of this, this mineral dysregulation, this metabolic dysfunction, and you had so much dysfunction in your body Ooh. that of course iron was in the wrong place. But we have this beautiful system in our body called the reticuloendothelial system. And that system creates 95% of our recommended daily intake for iron. The other 5% is more than easy to get from our diets because our food is processed with, it's fortified with iron. Um, right. So the fact that so many people are being told they're anemic, it's like, no, there's a lot of iron dysregulation happening. Uh, and then adding more iron to the fuel is not going to solve that problem if you're not storing it in the right place. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that too. So tell me like, how, where are you today? What, like, what are the biggest differences you've seen since, cause you're pretty much almost through this program. I think we're waiting on, uh, a thyroid test. Yep. Thyroid and, and our Dutch and a Dutch test. And we waited on those. We pushed those back, you know, just because of yeah. everything printing that would get me a little bit better. And then that way we can get more of a realistic. So I'm so excited to get those results. Yeah. Actually, that's tonight. So you will have that in the mail awesome. on Monday. I'm very excited. Um, so maybe we could do, you know, a follow up. Um, you know, yeah, just if you're open to that. So we, I want to say we held off because we did your GI map, I think in October. And um, so I wanted to hold off on doing this hormone test because I knew if we did it in October, I knew what it was going to say, because you had, we had answers to why things were so messed up the gut, like it was your gut. And so I thought, well, why don't we heal your body, give your body some respite, and then let's test you when you're feeling better. And then we'll have a better snapshot of what your hormones are actually doing. So, um, I also don't like to do a bunch of tests up front when we can find the answer, the answers we need with one test, because testing is mm -hmm. not, testing's not cheap. Um, and I don't want, I want you to, I want you to get the most out of testing, right? So, um, having tests later on, if we had done a thyroid panel during that time too, when you had C. diff and H. pylori and parasites, 
it wouldn't have been an accurate panel, I guarantee it. And so I'm glad we're able to do this now where we can see, okay, do you have anything lingering? Do you have anything that we, we still need to address? Um, mm-hmm. Because ideally, if your gut is healed, I would hope your hormones would kind of be in line with that. I think that's a great plan. But yeah, so tell me, so you told me two things that just totally made my day. You told me, um, I think this was in a text message that you, in the last nine years, you haven't left, you haven't left the house without makeup on or dropped your kids off at school without makeup on. Yes, never. And Will, you did. I have struggled, I, back up, I said the side pain was probably my first symptom. It was actually probably my acne and I've had it for eight years consistently. Mm. I've met, had one to three days where I did not have some sort of a breakout. Um, and oh my gosh, my face has transformed. I still have a little, oh, just a tiny bit. I can't tell you how many days I can get up and take my kids to school and not put on a full face unless of course, you know, like with work and all of that good stuff, sure. but I get up on my days off and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have to put on makeup and I feel confident and is mm-hmm. it's, it's you know, it's, it just does something to you. It's just so different. I, I thought that I would have acne forever because I've had it for so long mm-hmm. uh, and it just messed with me mentally, you know? Um, of so. course I've been there myself. I have been there myself. I know what that's like. 100%. You- it's my goal. My goal was to be able to go to the gym without makeup on when I was, you know, in my twenties and I had that, you know, problem as well. And uh, yeah, it's a total confidence booster, but here's the thing. Like that wasn't our main focus. No, so much happening that I did not care. I could have cared less if I had acne. I was like, I can't function. Like I need the energy to get up and, you know, be a mom and go to work and do my job and come home and, you know, be able to function. Um, that was my main concern. So yeah, the acne was on the back burner and, you know, I'd always like touch on it. Like it's important, you know, I would love to be this, but it's not my most important thing. Um, yeah. So that's, the, it's just so many things. It's just crazy how, you know, I had all these specialists and just nothing was checked off. It just, I kept adding another specialist and another specialist and another specialist. Mm-hmm. And you, the cold I had for 10 months straight with no relief gone. I can mm-hmm. breathe allergies. You know, my poor husband and my, my daughter are struggling right now. I'm fine. You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. I have allergies every year, you know, and and maybe I will next week, maybe not, but I, it's a complete game changer for me. Um, you know, so it's just so many different areas, not just one. It's like the total body and I love it. Yeah. I mean, when you heal, I think when, when you heal your gut, your face, you know, reflects that your skin reflects that. And Um, So I think that that's a beautiful story to be said, because when you go to a dermatologist, they're not going to treat your gut. They're just going to do topicals or um, give you spironolactone or something, which spironolactone um, side note is an assumption that you are androgenic. So if you are not androgenic and you take spironolactone, it's not going to do anything for you. Um, But that's like, I think the go-to treatment is spironolactone and maybe some like topical treatment. Um, it's just really interesting how that, how that plays. So the, another thing you told me is about your energy that you're playing with your kids and you feel great. Like that is music to my ears. Cause that's why we do everything, right? That's why you went through all the hard work of taking care of yourself. Cause you have these three beautiful girls that you need to be there for. We park. Oh my gosh you know, last week, I mean, I'd come home from work three days in a row. We went to the park. My husband was on a work trip, um, you know, do working, taking care of the kids, full energy, cooking dinner. Um, last week was probably, I guess just because I was by myself. So it was really kind of, you know, brought to light that, wow, I really feel good. Um, you know, talked about kind of goals and that was going to the gym. My husband and I, I have been working out this week, mm-hmm. have not gotten two years have not just couldn't do it. Though. And not just because not have the energy, the heart pouts, like, yeah. oh my, it just beat fast. It would scare me. And then it would add additional anxiety. And then it was just a whole ordeal. And so I'm like, okay, not going to do it. 
um, and then the shortness of breath, like it just couldn't function. So working out wasn't even an option. Um, so yeah, we've done that this week. Um, yeah, lots of good stuff, but yeah, the energy, the chronic fatigue, it's so random. And if I have it, it's because I've eaten really bad, you know, I've done something and that's okay. I'm not, you know, I don't want to encourage people that, Hey, if you just make one mistake, you're going to fall off the wagon. Cause you're not, mm -hmm. um, but I can feel it. I can feel a difference. So it's like when you start noticing certain things or, you know, you may have answers to why this is happening, then you start noticing certain things. Um, so if I do eat or drink something, you know, maybe I shouldn't have, then, you know, maybe I'll have a little bit of fatigue, but it doesn't last all day or not to the point to where I have to take a nap or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's cool that when, you know, I think when I met you and sorry, if you can't see me, but I'm going to use like hand gestures, your cup was filled to the brim. So anything, you know, anything could offset you really easily because your cup was already full, but when you kind of detox your body, you know, from the things you have going on, your cup becomes a little bit more empty. So then when you do have, and, and I am all for food freedom, if you want to have dessert or you want to go out with girlfriends and grab a drink, you yep. like, that's a quality of life thing. You should be able to do that, but that shouldn't be the tip of your cup. That shouldn't cause your cup to brim over. Um, like, exactly. and that's for all what. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh my goodness. Maybe there's a little bit of anxiety still left too. Um, you know, because I was aware when I was like, I could not eat ice cream. Oh my gosh, no way. Could I dare you can forget it. Um, but you know, goals, maybe one day when I get, it's a process. We've only been doing this since, you know, October. Um, I can't wait to see where I am in a year. Oh my so, gosh. You're going to be eating ice cream. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? I was the exact same way. I think I told you this. If I, back in my twenties, if I had ice cream, I would break out the next day. Like that, no question about it. Yep. Um, and now I have dairy every day and I feel great. I don't have any skin issues. I can, tr whenever we travel, you know, traveling will do that to you too. If you, you, you never, you're never eating your healthiest when you're on vacation, let's be real. Never. But I don't break out when I'm on vacation anymore. Like I don't, because you know, and it does take time to get there, but you will, yeah. you will. Well, is there anything you wanted to share that I didn't ask you about? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, I think symptoms, kind of what we found, what we've discovered, solutions, how I feel today. Um, yeah. Covered it. Well, I am so like in awe of you. You did a lot of hard work. Like this does not, this is not a passive activity, right? When you choose to pursue this integrative approach, it's very active and you've always been motivated. You've always been open minded. You've always been. I'm really committed to whatever the plan is you, you stick to it, like, like to a T. Um, and I think that speaks a lot about, about you and your determination to feel better. Um, so if you're listening, I just encourage you to don't settle. If you feel like your doctor's not listening to you, they don't have to be your doctor anymore. They're there to serve you, not the other way around. Um, and if you feel like you're just in this downward spiral and you're not getting answers, keep looking because you'll find them. There's a reason. I mean, I'm a firm believer that your body was beautifully and wonderfully made and is capable of healing, you know? So, so anyways, thank you so much for being here. I loved this time. You, you shared with me things that I didn't know. So that was kind of fun <laughs> to learn. And, um, yeah, listeners, I hope you took something away from this that you can um, you can be inspired to take ownership of your health. Absolutely.